It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. Charlemagne the guy. Andrew Schultz. We are the brilliant idiots, and uh, we don't have no pre-rolls this week, but mm. we have a lot of mid-rolls and a post-rolls, so don't ever think we fell the fuck off, okay? Never we Never think that. All right? Uh, but we do have some church announcements, do we? Um... We do, yeah, 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 yeah. Look, we can get into it later. Let's let's talk, man. We got some cool, I, yeah, cool I don't things have, going. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't have no church announcements. I'm All done right, with y'all, motherfuckers. Good. I am. I am done. Yesterday was my last day uh, at Breakfast Club. Yeah. I'm tightening up some things today because you know we're recording the podcast right now Thursday morning. It's right. 8:30 in the morning. So after I do this podcast, I got one other thing to do, and I am fucking done until yeah. January 7th. Now, did you block off all this time to give six nine head? Mm. <laughs> It was a short bet, baby. Like, it was a short bet. Yo, there's nobody. You were in the hot listen, seat this listen, week. Listen, I would never use that kind of hyperbole <laughs> yeah. if I didn't think it was a short bet. Now, how long did it take you to find out how to properly pronounce hyperbole? It actually, you know what? It took. I, I always knew how to pronounce it, but for whatever reason, I, said, saw hyper, it? I said hyperbole. <laughs> you were like, shit, did Elon Musk invent something? It's, hyper, it's, hyper, it's hyperbole. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's the same thing as when Biggie said. Go like you, this right here. When Biggie said, you look yeah. so good, I'll suck on your daddy's dick. Quoted yeah. Richard Pryor. It's all huh? hyperbole. Oh, when yeah. Biggie said, I'll fuck RuPaul before I fuck them ugly ass escape bitches. You, you, know you what still I'm saying? got this thing right here. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's all hyperbole. So that's yeah. what I was using to let people know there was no way in hell 6ix9ine was beating this case. Yeah. And, and so, yo, it's, you know what's so crazy about Even the if he got out, you wouldn't be uh, responsible to suck his dick. If I would never, that would, that, that's a bet. No, I'm I, not saying that you would have done it. He still didn't you, beat the case. He didn't either way. beat the yeah, case. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But now you got these idiots on social media who will say things now like, oh, yeah. well, he only got 24 months. Technically, that's beating the case. No, it's fucking it's not. Beating not. The case. There's no such thing as technically he beat the case. I don't give a fuck if he got 24 months yeah. or two days. He got sentenced. Would you remove your chains before doing it, hypothetically <laughs> speaking? I would that, never do it. It's a show bet. It was a show bet. But that, wouldn't that be slightly disrespectful? So the nah. Honorable Elijah Muhammad and Malcolm X, you just hear their chains dangling. It's called it. hyperbole. <laughs> right. Everybody go Google hyperbole. Right. It's an exaggeration. You know what I mean? Like, you're a comedian. You do hyperbole all the time. Bro, I thought you said hyperbole, and I was like, you're really no. going for the sack with this blowjob, right. huh? <laughs> <laughs> but, but once again, can we, can, we, can we say something once again? Yes. I'm right. <laughs> like I am all the time about shit. Okay? That's what you. That's what people really hate. That's what they they want Charlamagne to be that's so wrong. Ooh, we got him finally. <laughs> Six nine is coming home. He's gonna have to suck that dick. I'm sitting back looking at all the memes. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. You know Where do these rumors come from on the internet? What do you mean? Like as far as like Six nine's coming home. That never came from any reliable source. That never came from a reliable source. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Okay, okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? What, what, what do you, where do you think it comes from? I just think people just start that shit, they throw it out there and it goes. Now, I will say last week. You don't think actually, maybe a lawyer, maybe like I think someone's the on the team? I think it came from the label. And the label made it up? I think it came from the label. I think the label was gauging the the, the level of interest people still had in 6 9 Not even as far as like regular people, as far as like the media is concerned. Because they hit me last week. And they asked me if I would be down to do a one-on-one -on -one interview with 6 9 I said, nah, I don't think that would be a good idea. Yeah. Um, Did you ask what type? I mean, I didn't know if they were trying to cash in on the bet. I didn't know that I'm going to be I'm going to be his first sexual pleasure when he comes home. I don't fucking know. But I was just like, yeah, I don't think that'd be a good idea. I was like, his best two looks have been the Breakfast Club, mm -hmm. you know, um, maybe the Breakfast Club. But I said, I'll gauge interest. I said, I honestly didn't know how I felt, but I was like, I don't know how I feel about interviewing 6 9 Because if he would have got out... I would have felt like there would have been no accountability. You understand what I'm saying? Like, you you, you wild out, you know, you troll people, you order these hits on people, people got hurt, mm -hmm. you know, you do all of this bullshit, you go to jail, then you snitch on every fucking body, right. and then you just come home, what and, if, like, you're just supposed to be embraced with open arms. Like, where's the accountability in that? Like, how does a kid learn? Right, right, right. How does a kid learn from that 6 9 situation if he just comes home Reasonable. On Wednesday. He's been, there's a situation where he's been in prison for, what is it, 13 months or something? 13 months. Um, and, you know, you've been a you know, big proponent of change behavior. and Not after and 13 months. That's what the next question was. How long is it before you can get away from your past? Well, the best apology is change behavior, right? So right. I would have to see how he comes home. So if he was to come uh, home on yesterday, gotcha. I got to see what type of person he is. Gotcha. You know, are you coming home? 
humbled by the situation? Gotcha. Are you coming home acknowledging that what you did was wrong in a real way? Are yeah. you a changed man? Are you still out here telling everybody suck your dick? Right. You know what I mean? And yeah. by the way, I have no reason to trust him because he's a young troll. So he's the type of person that will say anything, right, to get what he wants. Right. So you come home and you try to be nice 6 9 Nice 6 9 don't work. Right. So now you got to go back to suck my dick 6 9 and super thug gangster 6 9 because you surrounded by all of this security 6 9 and then now all of us looking stupid again and now we back where we started at. I, I never thought that the uh, super thug thing was that compelling. I thought the self-deprecation was funny. Like when he would run in the hallways and talk about how he's the fastest guy when he's like super slow, obviously. And it was just hysterical. Like he'd just be in this hotel yeah, I mean, room all that shit is funny when he's to... playing soccer and like he's the best goalie. Like when he was kind of making fun of himself and poking fun of himself, I was really entertained. Him telling like thugged out people to suck his dick was funny because it kind of exposed their fake thuggery in a lot I don't of ways. Think that it exposed their fake thuggery. They just never ran into each other. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I mean, like. There's certain people you can't tell them to suck your dick. That's not true. Not on when I was the internet. You got guys telling the president to suck their dick every you day. You can tell the president to suck over his dick over the internet to suck your dick. Do it in person. You can't <laughs> do it in person with all the secret service and watch what happens to you. I think you could say suck my dick Shit. to the president. Not without getting tackled. You can't run up on him and actually physically make him suck your dick. But that's how it sounds on the internet. On the internet. Yo, anybody can be whatever they want to be on the internet. You can say whatever you want to right. say on the internet. But there are consequences to those actions, right? And even yeah. with somebody like 6 9 that shit is all fun and games. So you look at the letters from the victims right. that they sent to the judge. Or you look at the innocent bystander. You don't think about shit like that. The innocent bystander who got shot here, here, when he was ordering a hit on somebody. Here's what I would say. The illusion maybe before 6 9 was... Yo, you don't even say a word about these gangster rappers because if you even say a word about them, you might not have felt this way. But maybe someone like myself who's a little bit more removed, the the, the idea was that they were like mob bosses where it's like, you don't even say a word because if you say a word, someone's going to see you about it. And then... He could have still got saw. That's fair. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah. But like, he started saying a word about everybody and none of them did anything and it was kind of fascinating for he didn't go nowhere though you on the so he was in chicago shit. like he was he in all up these to, places they showed the video he was in no, 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 LA. No, 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 no. they showed the video yeah, yeah, of yeah. this guy in chicago surrounded by police officers yeah. surrounded by all this type flight security yeah. this old block he went to at like 4 35 in the morning yeah. he literally was there for like 40 seconds yo he got kidnapped what do you mean he got kidnapped in Chicago, but he got kidnapped in New Here York. In New York, in exactly. So it's, yeah. it's not even that hard but to get him. He got kidnapped him. by his own crew. That's the thing. So it's not even no, that no, no, hard no, no, to no. get him. No, Andrew, he got kidnapped by his own crew. I, I can kidnap you right now. I know wow. where you're at. Cause I know where you're at. <laughs> I know. Who, you know what I'm saying? We, you we got a team. kidnap me. You want to hang just out? Saying, we're a team. I hang out, bro. We go get some food or whatever. He ain't got to kidnap saying, me, dude. We're a team. Yeah. It's easy to kidnap somebody in your team. Right. That's the easiest thing to do. I know a tailor that every day. So you would kidnap her? I'm, depends <laughs> the price. It's a hot commodity out here in these streets. How much you going for, Taylor? <laughs> Yo, if they hit us and they were like one million, I'd be like, what's, yeah, what's Sin doing? Board. I wouldn't tell. Is Sin know how to do the board? <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't sell Taylor for one million. You wouldn't sell her. I wouldn't sell her for nothing. I have. What does that mean? <laughs> I wouldn't sell her for nothing. I have. <laughs> oh, I forgot you're selling. I was in a buyer's market. That's right. You kidnapped. Yeah, 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 yeah. So here's the question. Mm -hmm. What would we pay for Taylor? So let's say she was kidnapped by someone else. And I know her? It's Taylor. Like I know her. You know her. It's Taylor. It's this Taylor. She's not your relative. Ransom? Yo, one. It's, Wait a minute. Yeah. Is this a ransom? Like, are we trying to get her back to save her life? Or this to have her? No, 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 no. You don't what own do you her now. Okay. Do you know how kidnapping works? <laughs> so it's a ransom. Do we need to bring in a professional? Wax, get in here. <laughs> no, it's a ransom. It is a ransom. Taylor is kidnapped. There is one way to get her back. It is one million U.S. dollars to get her back. Mm. Prayer changes things, bro. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Everybody, let's hold hands and let's all say a prayer for young Taylor. You know what I mean? I love her. <laughs> okay. Please. Please, Bro, God, bring her back You know how quickly he safely. would be in Anguilla forgetting <laughs> about your ass? <laughs> please, please, God, bring her back home safely. Please. <laughs> so you're not putting up a Millie for Taylor. Millie's a lot of money, bro. 
Shows <laughs> a milli is a lot a of money a lot though. Of Dude, money, a milli is a lot of money, yo. Say what? What about half? Five hundred. I gotta see what your mom. What kind of collateral your mom got? You get the house. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's true. No, I'm serious. Like, your mom got to put up the money first. What's that? It's like, not on I, Charlotte. I need some collateral. Like, what could, if I put this money up, yeah. how do I make sure it's an ROI on this? No, no, there's no return on investment. You're <laughs> that not, is an investment. It's not a stock. Yes, it is. <laughs> if I put no, a half a million I'm a free dollars. you dealer, but I get 20% yeah, in perpetuity. I, I wouldn't even put no interest on it. I don't want to make sure that I get my money back at some point in time. But you can't get your money back. If, if you put the house up. If her mom put the house in my name. So you going to buy her mom's house. Do you want Taylor back or not? <laughs> <laughs> now you're holding her ransom too. You're doing the same thing. You're kidnapping her. You basically transferred the kidnapping. Like, are you like a hooch with this? <laughs> Is this a ring? <laughs> Yo, a milli? No. 500K? No. Okay. What's the no question amount? $50,000 to get Taylor back. I put 50 up. Yo, that's what's up, Taylor. You got 50 out of me. <laughs> that is what's up, Taylor. I'll put 50 up. 50 up for Taylor. That's no problem. But 75. I'll I do 75 for Taylor. 90. I'll do 90 for Taylor. 100. I'll do 100 for Taylor. $150,000. That's when it gets a little tricky. <laughs> <laughs> that's, when it's all, that's when that's when we have to start thinking about other options. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. A hundred. Um, <laughs> yeah, you did. You did give two hundred fifty thousand dollars for girls to go to college, bro. Well, girls have a future. <laughs> I'm not saying you don't have a future, Taylor. I'm just saying I don't know how you'll be after the kidnapping. <laughs> <laughs> like trauma is some real shit. Yo, I'm that's serious. a good point. Real, yo. You gotta see you... what shape the car that's is in before you buy I'm saying, it. Yo, yeah, that trauma is no fucking joke after that shit, bro. Yo, a lot. You might not get your life together ever again. And then he can't get any return on investment. It might be just a lifetime of therapy and counseling for you. For I'm dead serious. <laughs> Every like, time I'm... we say handcuff, you start shaking in the fucking mm-mm, corner. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. This could be bad. Mm-mm. But I'm saying all that to say, Takashi got kidnapped by somebody in his team. That's easy to do. Right. So it's just like he could he, he he was avoiding a lot of potential really bad trouble. I actually think jail was a good thing for him. And and the police officers said that when they arrested what him. What do you mean? They said we're arresting you because if we don't arrest you, it's over. You're gonna get killed. Whoa. They told him that. So I think it was for two reasons. I don't think they was really caring about his safety. I also I also knew I think they know that they could have flipped they knew they could flip Takashi 69 the way that they did. Yeah. Simple as that. And do you think that there's any future for him? Mm-hmm. It's gonna be rough though, but it's definitely a future. I mean, I see Takashi. Um, I see Takashi coming home sometime next year. Um, he's gonna need twenty four seven, three hundred and sixty five day security. How much is that? It's gonna be very costly. I mean, I look at somebody like Fifty Cent. I don't know if Fifty Cent had around the clock security, but I know at Fifty Cent, I know in like oh nine, I read an article that said Fifty Cent security detail was one point six million dollars. Holy shit! And I don't even think that's around the clock. That's just like when he's moving. Around you know maybe the city or different cities are going in and out of town. I don't know. If, I don't know if that's around the clock, but that, it was one point six million for fifty cent. Now my question is, how's Takashi gonna make that money? Because let's just say the label put up ten million dollars, right? And so maybe a million or two of that goes into his pocket. The rest goes into his budgets for albums, security, and stuff like that. Right. He's gonna be on supervised release five years. What does that mean? It's like a supervised release. So it's like probation for five years. Or maybe parole. I don't know if it's probation or parole, but he's going to be on probation or parole for five years. And that means he can travel if he gets permission. If he gets permission. Right. Right now. Probably just in the States. Probably just in the States. Before he left, before he went in, none of these arenas and shit wanted to fuck with him. Right. Live Nation and none of them wanted to fuck with him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, So it's like, you think that's going to change? Now that he's out, hmm. now they're gonna look at him as more of a liability because they think everybody really wants to kill this motherfucker. So now. what's the monetization? Strategy? I don't know because you don't make that much money off streaming. We know that already. We know you don't make a lot of money off streaming. Like a billion streams on Spotify equates to like a million, two million dollars, something like that. So mm-hmm. you know you don't make a lot of money off streaming. You're gonna have to be on the road constantly yeah. to make this money, and 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 really just to pay the security security bill every motherfucking year on top of your other bills. I don't see how it. La- I don't see how he survives long. Huh. That's just my. That's just my personal take on it. I just don't see where the money's gonna come from. I just don't. But you think the labels believe that there's money here? Clearly, the labels hit us up last week. The labels wanted to do an interview. They wanted me to do a one-on-one interview. I told them that we should do Breakfast Club. 
they really thought he was coming home on Wednesday, which is another thing I think probably pissed off the judge. And when stuff like that gets in the news, yeah, it's like, it's like you oh, don't decide. You don't decide who the yeah. fuck you're coming home. You already setting up interviews, motherfucker? Like, yeah. for real. And the way the judge was lining it up, I thought the judge was about to get that motherfucker like yeah. 10 years. I said, I said he would probably get a three to five with time served. Yeah. So he'd probably do like two years. So, I listen, I thought it was, a, I thought, I'm not going to say I thought it was a fair and just sentence because he snitched. You know what I'm saying? And I, yeah. I, 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 the cooperation is bad. Like, but he, he at least got held accountable. And he's going to be held accountable for the rest of his life. This is a permanent stain. Can we can we discuss this here? Mm-hmm. If, if you're going to snitch and then your crew tries to take, take you out, I get that. But if your crew tries to take you out first and then you snitch, is that not understandable? No. Nah, I like what the judge said yesterday. The judge said, you are not a victim here. No, no, the, the judge, I'm, I'm not judge. saying he's a victim, but but just on that one, I'm just curious about snitch etiquette before we get into him specifically. Mm-hmm. In other words, let's say you and I are a gang, we're doing all these like, you know, bank robberies or shit like that, right? Let's say I'm about to go snitch on you. Mm-hmm. You kill me. I kind of get it because it's like... If Ghost hasn't snitched on Tommy yet and Tommy hasn't watch. snitched on Ghost, But no. I get it. But here's the thing. Let's say you're about to kill me, right? Mm-hmm. And I find out that you want to kill me so you don't have to share any of this bank money with me. And I go, well, fuck that. I'm snitching on this motherfucker. He's trying to kill me. Don't you start the bad shit? You can't do that. You got to kill me. That's the gangster Ah, way. ah, (laughs) You can't ah, rush the police. ah, You got to kill ah, me. ah, ah, ah. Okay. That's it. You got to give me got. Okay. Yeah. It's everything is outside of law enforcement. Mm -hmm. You can't. So it would be more respected on the streets, not saying this is a good thing to do, but it would be more respected on the streets, in other words, if I handled you... Totally understandable. ...before you handled me. Totally understandable. And people who would say, oh, that that was dishonorable, you killed your man. Once you explain the situation... They'd be like, like, okay, I I had no other choice. Simple as that. Okay, that's just what I need to clear it up about the etiquette. So the whole thing about the streets, and I'm sure it's just similar to mob shit or everything, is just we handle things outside law enforcement. Absolutely. Once you start dealing with law enforcement, you're a rat. That's it. These are the same people we've been ducking and fucking right. and challenging okay. for years. And so now you want to use them to your advantage. That's, yeah. why, that's why I love what the judge said to 6 9 yesterday. The judge yeah. was like, you're not a victim. Because yeah. when it was convenient for you, you used this, this army yeah, yeah, to yeah, do yeah. your bidding. Yes. You called hits on... Trippy Red and you yes. called hits on Chief Keith like when it was when it was serving you he, he actually called him selfish the judge called him selfish what he said the judge said you're selfish so when it was when it was self-serving to you yeah you used this gang to, to, to your motherfucking bidding so you ain't no you know you know innocent here right at all so I, listen I don't feel sorry for 6 9 I'm shocked that he didn't get a little bit more time right but it's just gonna be rough for him when he comes home yeah who's coming in it's oh. Carolina. It's gonna be very oh. rough for him when he comes home, man. I don't, and I honestly don't see. What how What would you he... do if you're him? Hmm. I would do a lot of soul searching. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't worry about the character of Six Nine. How right would you now. stay alive? Is what I'm asking. When he comes home, what would you do to stay alive? I don't know. I mean, listen, we we live in a different era, so I'm not saying that he's gonna be getting shot at everywhere he goes. Yeah. Um. I, I I don't know, man. I guess that honestly, when you ask, ask ask me that question, what would I do to stay alive? That's why I say I would do a lot of soul searching. Like mm. I would I would really dismiss the character of Six Nine because the character of Six Nine is what got me in that situation. And mm. I would really lean in on to who the fuck Daniel Hernandez is. Mm. You know what I mean? I'd be trying to figure out my life. You know what I mean? I'd be doing a lot of soul searching and just you know holding myself accountable. You know, recognizing where I went wrong and trying to correct that as a man, and then. I would get back into the music thing. That's why that's another reason I didn't want to interview him so soon. Cause I'm like, this label don't give a fuck about six, nine. Mm. They didn't give a fuck about six, nine before he went into jail. Mm. They were funding the dysfunction. Right. Mm. So now that he's went to jail and he's snitched and he's back out on the street, they just want to fund more dysfunction. Mm. Cause they want their what? ROI. Mm. That's it. If they, if they, if, they, if it's true that they invested 10 million in them, which I don't, I don't even know if that's true. If it's true that they did, they want their fucking money back. All they're thinking about is product. Go out here, right. make these motherfucking songs. Let's see if we can get you on the road doing some shows. And that's that. Yeah. It's just interesting, man. It, it, let's say I want return on investment. Mm-hmm. I guess that I, I would have to fund that 50 Cent-esque security. You have no choice. 
you have no choice. If I'm Daniel Hernandez, I have to take that agreement because that's the only thing that keeps me alive. If I don't want to take that agreement, does he move to Montana? Like, where does he go? I don't think like, nowhere he can go. I, it, it's a different era. How the fuck do you have witness protection when you a celebrity? I've never seen a case like this. Correct me if I'm wrong, Chris or Andrew. I've never seen a case with a, a high profile celebrity, yeah. right? And, and, and I mean, I'm not gonna call six nine a list, even though I hate those fucking lists. But he's a he's a he's, he's a high, high profile, profile celebrity, yeah. and you're a fucking government informant, <laughs> like, bro, like I've bro, never seen anything like this. It it is so interesting because this might be the first. Witness protection situation of the internet world where witness protection was predicated on the whole idea that middle America had no clue what was going on mm -hmm. in entertainment mm -hmm. or like on the coasts. Mm -hmm. So literally the idea of witness protection was, well, we'll send them to Oklahoma. They don't know what's happening yeah. over there. Yeah. The internet has shrunk the world. Absolutely. Those kids in Oklahoma listen to the same hip-hop your Absolutely. kids listen to, listen to the same hip-hop my cousins listen yeah. to. Everybody, They know 6 9 I don't think that you can send him to any place in America where the kids there will be unaware of who he is. But also, Schultz, he wants to be seen. Right, right, right. He's right, right, a right, rapper. Right. But if he didn't, <laughs> if he was like, I, tr I truly just want to go... Uh, what? I don't think he's going to be in witness protection. I just think that... No, he turned it down. But let's say they offered it to him. Where are you going to witness protect them? Utah, they're hip. Yeah, man. Montana, they're hip. Yeah, the man. internet shrunk everything. Yeah, flatten, there's no the more... the world. Yo, there's no more witness protection, bro. Yeah. The, it's I gone. Know. I really don't know. And then, like I said, 24-7, 365 security. I just don't see how he... I just don't see where the money's going to come from. He wasn't generating that kind of paper when he was out. So it's just like, I don't see where that money's going to come from. Like, right, like it's, it's screaming is not going to be able to cover those kind of bills. You know what I'm saying? Unless you can't he's on, do a reality show because... Reality show, he could, but it's not going to cover those kind of bills. Who's going to pick it up? <sighs> One of these networks. Well, Showtime already... Showtime doing a documentary on him or some shit like that. <laughs> Complex is doing a documentary. Yeah, like, they've been announced the Showtime shit. They announced the Showtime shit months ago. Like, they, yes, <laughs> motherfuckers give a fuck about that content now. Let's not get it fucked up. Content is always king. A TV network will definitely pick it the fuck up. But I'm just talking about as far as like him making consistent money on a show basis, I don't see it. Who's the touring company that's going to sign 6 9 Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. I just think the irony of 6 9 uh, getting sentenced and Trump getting impeached on the same fucking day. Hey, yo, 6 Listen 9 should universe, slap bro. harder, bro. We were we were on Twitter, refreshing Twitter. This guy was giving this long ass speech. The judge, we were there for every second. Me, you, and Van texting. Me and Alex, te uh, we were actually together with Kaz. Kaz, we're going through every single moment. The Trump impeachment I, happened. Nah, we're like, bro, eh. I think, nah, I think they slapped equally. Son, we didn't I, even discuss the Trump impeachment. I had a couple of group chats going, but you know what was so good about it? It yeah. was day and night. Takashi was during the day. Yeah, Trump was late at night. Trump was like eight o'clock, nine o'clock last night. All the impeachments came down. I think. I think the difference was, I knew an impeachment in the House didn't mean anything. So it's not like there was a decision made about Trump. Still historic though. It's historic. You got to stop saying it didn't mean anything. It's historic, but it doesn't do anything. It's in the other worst words, thing that can still... happen to a. It's, it's three. It's the three worst things that can happen to a president are impeachment. Yeah. Being removed for impeachment, which yeah. has never happened. Yeah. And actually getting assassinated. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. Those, like those yeah. are the three things that you don't want as a president. Yeah. I, I just don't think impeachment matters. No, nah, it matters. Well, I when don't you're, think when you're, so. When you're, when you're, when you're a pre what well, it's two things, right? When you're a narcissist like Donald Trump who was calling for the impeachment of Barack Obama. Right. Like literally saying, yo, he should be impeached for gross incompetence. They pulling up old tweets of his son saying Barack should be impeached. Right. Yeah, this is a stain. But I will say this, right? I'll throw, I'll throw, I'll throw. But do you don't think that he's okay with stains? His no. whole thing is being a stain. No. I think that you underestimate how little he cares about the people that don't like him. I think no. he's made a career. I think he's made a career on on not only a, not only political career, but an entertainment career on division. Most you group. either love or hate this man, and he understands what is more love or hate than politics. But, that, but that's what any polarizing person, right? Of course. But... Donald Trump has the most bruised, wounded ego I've ever seen. If there's one person out here that is dealing with their hurt inner child syndrome, yeah. it is that man. And every billionaire that I know, 
Especially here in New York. Saddle flex. I'm just letting them know. Saddle actually, flex. I was actually at dinner. I'll be honest with y'all. That dinner at Trump Towers last week. Really? It happened. happened. I didn't know how. I was like, what the fuck? This is why I have a dinner at? Whatever. So, <laughs> See, so we, when they call. <laughs> so we was having dinner. And they yeah. were talking to me about Trump. And they were saying how we never took Trump serious. Trump right. was a goofy. Like he, he always wanted to be down. He always wanted to be down yeah. with that club. He thought being president was going to finally make that club accept him. Now they look at you as an even bigger dickhead, right? Yo, but I thought I thought Trump a little bit of bail, right? Just honestly, a honestly though, they never accepted him. Mm-hmm. But he manifested that shit. What do you mean? When he was earlier on in his career, he would call the tabloids himself. And he'd go, hey, I'm the publicist for Donald Trump. Sorry, billionaire Donald Trump. Before he was even a billionaire. I'm the publicist for billionaire Donald Trump. He was at this restaurant last night with this person trying to get in page six. All this kind of, and he'd call himself billionaire Donald Trump before he was ever a billionaire. He knew exactly what he was doing. He was fake so until he make the, it. You don't think that's the highest level of insecurity? Bro, I'm that's not. like Kevin Durant's burner account. I'm not, like you're calling the fucking New York Post and page six to report stories on yourself. I'm not denying that it's wildly insecure. What I am denying is, what I am saying is, he is aware of these global elites, these billionaires, right? And he's aware of who he is. I, I don't think he. I don't think that. I don't think he's unaware of that. I don't think he thinks he's one of them. I think he definitely wants to be down with the in crowd. A hundred percent wants to be done. book. 100% wants Come to be here, down. Chris, we need you right now. I think he definitely wants to be part of the in crowd. He's always wanted to be part of the in crowd. Right. And we're, never... we're not having a political discussion, Chris. I'm, we're just I'm talking about character. About yeah, 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 yeah. You wrote a book about Trump. Now, yeah, careful, you're in, the, you're in the shots, Chris. You're... What was the book about? Chris, you're behind you. There's two cameras. Yeah. And I will say the reason I bought Chris in because even before Donald Trump was president, Chris has been telling me, telling me these kind of stories. So I know that they're not coming from a biased place. This right. is just his... No, no, no. Opinion it, of Donald it, Trump. It, this isn't political. This right. is. This I'm, I'm is... just giving you a character evaluation yeah. of Donald yes, Trump. Yes, come come this way a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I did not write a book for Donald Trump. I wrote a book for his daughter his Ivanka. Daughter. There you go. Right, right. Um, I was. So fired. you been writing some problematic literature, bro? Hey, someone's got to do it. <laughs> Yo, you are the curse, bro. If you real talk, <laughs> if he writes your book, How you, many got, you got a you got a me too coming, bro. <laughs> real talk. Yo, what is your record for uh, for authored me too's, dog? <laughs> so, yo, you're undefeated, bro. <laughs> it's almost like it's almost like not enough copies moving. Chris, oh, I got a story you. for you. This Chris when you got a point, you got a point. So, <laughs> That's a point right there. This is the worst ghost writer in history. <laughs> Chris, you got a record, bro. You got a resume. Bro, when's that Kevin Spacey book coming out? <laughs> He's working on it right now. He's working on Harvey Weinstein's Life After Prison book. <laughs> okay. Now, Chris, so tell us. Character assessment of Donald Trump. Yeah. Um... I think he was on the outside of what you would call the in crowd. Yes. Uh, I think Ivanka was very much uh, groomed to be on the inside. Yes. And I think that's where it gets interesting because I think she was part of that scene. I mean, when I was working for her, um, they asked me to interview her friends and her friends were all, you know, Rupert Murdoch's wife. Yeah. Uh, Carlos Slim, the, basically. The, the Mexican richest, billionaire. Mexican, yeah. Mexican billionaire. Um, They're kids. No, no, them. He positioned ah. her to be friends with all those people that he couldn't maybe get access to because they thought he was too crass. He wasn't grandfathered in, but she, she could was. be. She could be born in. And he looked yet. at Trump as a nigga. Well, I, I, well that is was, a harsh way of looking at that's it. That's right. the truth. They thought he was ghetto. Yeah. Out of borough, which was a big deal. Out of borough. That's right. He's from Queens. He's from Queens. He's not a city kid. He didn't go really? to the... Y'all look at it like that? I didn't know y'all look oh, at things like dude, that. Oh, dude, it's... Yeah. Within it's, those circles, yeah. Dude, humans have hierarchies. No matter where we are, we have hierarchies. Someone was telling me a story about when they were in... Uh, oh, fuck, what was it? Like Namibia or some shit like that. And there was a club. And I think it was... Yeah, my buddy Ben. He was like, in mean, Namibia. He was in this club. It was outside. And they had a VIP section of the club that just had two plastic chairs. <laughs> outside two plastic chairs but human beings need fucking hierarchies we're disgusting right we need it that's crazy I didn't know it man had crazy. to look down on not queens. to interrupt but it's not to look down but it's just like how can I find a way to, to have some value over you without doing any work because I look at it from a hip hop perspective Queens got all the best rappers 
Way more right. than Manhattan. Manhattan? Well, well, Manhattan got well, I mean, billionaires usually don't define their worth by who has the best rappers. I know, but yeah. I'm telling you how my perspective of yeah, I, I know. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, but it's also yo, true. Yo, bring that, Donald in. You right. know, run DMCs from Queens. But look, a lot of, a lot of rappers gravitated to Trump yeah, before yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, I right. mean, to, to hang out with Trump was the sign that and you had Trump made it as a rapper. And Trump gravitated a lot of rappers. rappers. You know why? Because Trump had the money. Right. He was the yeah. playboy. Right. And so back then, all of those rappers, that's probably the richest person they knew and had access to. So they were showing mad love. Oh, and right. and furthermore, they were all faking until they made it. Right, rappers were acting like they had this had tons of money when they didn't, and Donald Trump was acting like he had tons of money when he didn't. And you know what? Some of those rappers ended up getting tons of fucking money, and Donald Trump ended up getting Trump tons of money. Trump did have tons of money though. When he in, just wasn't a billionaire. So here's the thing, and you know this now because you're operating with these mm -hmm. guys. You have tons of money compared to Taylor. Yeah, yeah. When yeah. you're with these billionaires, you. Don't got shit. No, they printing money. They printing money. So yeah, yeah, yeah. they so, talking about their, their vacations are my life savings. Exactly. Right. So <laughs> like, like seriously. So everything is relative, right? So if you're Trump and you're the poorest one in the group, you think you're broke. Yeah, he don't even own Trump Towers. Right. He licenses it the name. That, deal. But, yeah, his license. That, that's what I learned when I was working for them and researching the organization. Everything mm -hmm. is license the name. Put down as little as your own money as possible. If you burn the shit down, you just keep it moving. That's it. Yeah. Like that was his whole hustle. Yeah. hustle. And I guess it worked for him. Yeah. So I'm saying he's not the first person to not put no, money no, down. No, no, the, no. Yeah. Oh, I do want to. I do. Yeah. I did. I said I wanted. I wanted to. I just wanted. I want. I, I can see. I can play white devil's advocate with one thing. Right. Go. Donald Trump. No political experience whatsoever. Mm hmm. The highest seed in the land. Mm -hmm. Bro, of course he's going to fuck it up. Like, mm. what you, like, of course he, like, what are we, like, we're acting like this guy was some skilled politician who knows the right. ins and outs of politics, what he should be doing, what he shouldn't be doing. It's easy to say, hey, all you got to do is listen to this person. And it probably is that easy. But he's not, he's probably, he's like, I'm not listening to you motherfuckers. Of course he was going to fuck up. This was destined to crash and burn. This is why the United States of America really needs to put some qualifications on being president, bro. Like, it, I, you have to have a certain educational level, and you have to have a yeah. certain level of political experience. This is not a game to be played with, man. You know, it's interesting that you say that. Even the type of impeachment, like the way that he fucked up, right? Abuse of power. Well, outside of abuse of power, right? The way that he got caught is such a apolitical way to get caught, right? It's a, a rookie move. Right, exactly. It's an inexperienced move, it's right? An inexperienced because move? a politician would have known how to get that message there. What do they call it? Back channeling? Yeah, with enough cushion that it with doesn't... With enough cushion. Right. And come back what, to he, what he did was a real estate move, right? which is... Hey, I want to build this building in New Hampshire. Who's the guy going up for Congress in New Hampshire? Right. Oh, uh, you know what? Get get me on the phone with that guy. Hey, listen, you want to? You want me to you, donate to your campaign? Yeah, right. but hey, I, 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 I can't donate to your campaign. Uh, you know, I will donate to your campaign. I would love to if, because if, there's that space. But you know, this thing I want, right? Or yeah, space, that's exactly. No, I'm not saying that this money's for that. I'm just saying, wouldn't it be great if we had this building and your campaign? That is classic New York. Well, not only New York, but just a real estate hustle when you're when you're dealing at the highest levels. And that's right. what I wish everybody who supports Trump, right? Everybody who supports Trump, I really wish they would just take a step back and just say, yo, of course he's going to fuck up. Like, stop acting like he's a president. Right, right. He, he well, stop stop I mean, acting like he's a politician. Sure, sure. But the idea like, that, that no presidents, that there are presidents that don't fuck up. People fuck up. But, but this then, is but every decision has a cost. Yeah, yeah. Look, look how he fucked up. It it's was such a rookie, inexperienced it was a rookie move. move. You should have expected him to make this move. And make, he doesn't make put this mistake. smart people around him, which is something no. I, I learned working with him is, I mean, you could put me in that category, but like he, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> Yo, honestly, that's hilarious. He doesn't hire smart people. <laughs> like, he hired me. No, but seriously, <laughs> like, I know how they do stuff. The number right. one qualification to get hired by them, and mm -hmm. this was true in the election, I'm sure it's true in the administration, is they want the cheapest person. Ah. No matter what they have, there's a, a blueprint they follow on every deal. Like, hmm. for instance, when they were negotiating with me, it was okay. This, let's say hypothetically, it's a hundred thousand dollar job. Yeah, right. They say, listen, you should do this for fifty thousand dollars, 
Mm. And we know it's under market. And this is exactly what they told me. But, but if you do but it for us, you're going to have so much right. shine around your name after you're connected to a Trump success. He really is a rapper. Right. That, isn't that it'll be worth most, it. Isn't that, yo, this exposure, bro. Right. Hey, no, hey give what, me 16 bars. But w- once this shit goes. That was the rap they gave me. And yeah. like, I was literally on, you know, Ivanka was like calling me up at, at midnight, you know, arguing over $5,000. Yeah. Like they literally tried and to squeeze. you quit? So what happened was, so they, they gave say, you oh, Lyme disease. Right. They gave me limes, <laughs> the orange version, but like <laughs> they gave you orange. <laughs> no. So they say, let's say it's a hundred thousand dollar job. Yeah. You do it for 50. Yeah. Then halfway through, she brought me in and she was like, it's clear to me. And you know, I've been going to her apartment yeah, twice yeah. a week yeah. or hours and hours of talking. It's clear to me. You don't respect my family. Right. And I was like, I don't. Wow. You know, like. Whoa. What made her say that? Because you're not, a, you're not, you're a reserved person. I'm a reserved. There was an incident <laughs> where, and this, this kind of comes back to what you're talking about with the thin skin, in cr- paper thin, mm-hmm. paper mache mm. thin. She said, I want you to come into a, a meeting with my father to watch how he operates. So um, it's a meeting in Trump Tower and they're going over the uh, hallways in a, in a hotel resort that they're building. And they, it, first, it's just her, an interior designer, and architect for 45 minutes. All right, if we spend this much on the rug, uh, this many units will be this much. And the light fixtures. Can you hold this story for one yeah. second? I have to, I'm about to piss my pants. Go do it. But don't right. finish. I want to hear the story. Don't, I got don't, the, I got you. Pause, press pause, Taylor. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you know what? I'll do a mid-roll. I'll All do right. a mid-roll. We'll come back, and Chris will finish this story, Oops. which I was very intrigued by. You can tell right. Chris writes books. God damn it. All right. Now, <clears throat> Postmates, other than your absolute best friends, who could you ask to bring you red wine at 4 p.m., sushi at 9 p.m., and a breakfast burrito at 8, 8 a.m.? Postmates. All right. Postmates is your personal food delivery, grocery delivery, whatever you can think of delivery service all year round. No more trips to the store. You don't even have to know where the store is. Postmates will deliver anything to you. Download the app for iOS or Android for free. Browse local restaurants and businesses and track your delivery. Okay. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Postmates will bring you what you want within the hour. Anything you're craving, Postmates can deliver. They're the largest on demand network in the known universe with more than 25,000 partner merchants. And for a limited time, Postmates is giving our Listen, is one hundred dollars of free delivery credit for your first seven days. That's right. To start your free deliveries, download the app right now and use code Idiots. That's code Idiots to get your credit for your first seven days when you download the Postmates app. All right, get anything you need anytime you need it. Download Postmates and save with code Idiots. Okay, and today's show is also brought to you by BetterHelp. I love BetterHelp. Okay. Because I want everybody to get the help that they need. If there is something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals, I know it's the holiday season. You might be feeling down. You might be feeling depressed. Well, better line, better help online counseling can help. Better help offers licensed professional counselors who are specialized in issues such as depression, anxiety, relationships, trauma, anger, family conflicts, LGBT matters, grief, self-esteem, and more. I read something the other day that said, uh, the suicide statistics among black men are like through the fucking roof. Not to mention it's the holiday season. Holiday depression is a real, real, real thing. I don't know why I get so lonely around the holidays, but you might need somebody to talk to so you can connect with your professional counselor in a safe and private online environment and get help at your own time and, and at your own pace. Anything you share is confidential. And it's so convenient. You can schedule secure video or phone sessions as well as chat and text with your therapist. If for some reason you are not happy with your counselor, though, you can request a new one at any time for no additional charge. All right. Best of all, it's a truly affordable option. Our listeners even get 10 percent off your first month with the discount code idiots. So why not get started today? Go to BetterHelp.com slash idiots. Then simply fill out a questionnaire to help them assess your needs and get matched with a counselor you'll love. That's BetterHelp.com slash idiots. Let's get back to the show. So Sorry Chris, about that. Yeah. Finish the story okay. about Mr. Trump, please. Okay, so when we last left, uh, I believe we were in the boardroom. Ivanka room. calls you in. She's like, you don't respect my family. You're like, facts. No, no, no. I'm back. I'm going back to the meeting where the incident happened or, or the, the first thing. Okay. So we're in the boardroom. It's her. It's an interior designer. It's an architect. They're going over the interior of the uh, whatever hotel they're building. and Check them. They're doing the the rugs, the lighting, the door fixtures, how much it's going to cost to do 300 of these, 400 of these, rah, rah. Yeah, yeah. Boring, but okay, this is how you make a hotel. After about 45 minutes, Trump himself comes in. He immediately starts reviewing their stuff. How come you didn't do it this way to the uh, 
interior designer? How come you could have saved us this amount doing this way? You could have saved us $1,000 doing this. Yeah. What about this? What about this? And he's making his point. And I'm like, damn, this dude's really fucking smart. Like, these guys have been, like, fumbling over the figures and having, and he just came in. He was, like, razor sharp. Like, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Why didn't you do that? You could have done that. What are you doing? And he made his point, And I was like, okay, I'm impressed. But then he kept going at this guy and going at this guy and going at this guy and go to the point where the guy literally almost started to cry. Like it was, it wasn't a physical beat right. down, but it was an emotional beat down. Yeah. And he just kept going. And finally, you know, I'm just supposed to be a fly on the wall. Yeah. I finally, you guys can't see this unless you're watching the video, but I just went like that. You did the emoji. I put my, emoji like, shrug. what the, the fuck? Shrug. The shrug. Like, what? Yeah. What, yeah, like, yeah, what, yeah. what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's too much. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, it's just limes, bro. Right. Yeah. It's just yeah. limes. So they pull me out. Ivanka pulls me out into the elevator and she's like, listen, I know that looked really bad. I knew, I know how that came off, but you got to understand it's not personal. That's just how we get the best margins on our deal. Like by Wait, yelling at people and emotionally abusing, destroy, them, abusing he them destroyed this dude. Can I, I never tell see, you something? What? For that? Yeah. He's my hero. Right. Okay. When I bought my apartment and they told me it was going to be six weeks to renovate and then they fucked me over for six right. months. Right. Six months. They right. fucking lied to me. Right. And fucked me over right. and stole my money for six right. months. And I didn't have the balls. I was too poor right. to yell at them. I was too poor to hire another contractor. Right. I was just at their at fucking their mercy. mercy. Right. The fact that some hero okay. could walk in a room right. and curse out a contractor who was fucking him over. Oh, my God. Well, the guy hadn't done anything yet. They were just planning it. But okay, maybe you can say the guy was setting it up to get better margins. I don't know. I thought it was one of the more outrageous things I've ever seen. I did the shrug. That was problem number one. Problem number two was I wrote a passage where I described uh, Trump Towers as glitzy. And, and they didn't like that. She pulled me in. She said, uh, why would you describe my family's building as glitzy? What's wrong with glitzy? Well, I was like, it's literally the definition of glitzy. Of glitzy is gold it's, it's all gold. over it. It's like covered in gold. So she was like, why would you try to portray us that way? As You know, glitzy implies like... Cheap. Cheap, garish, not classy. Gaudy. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So that was a problem. Then the other problem is she said, I use too many colloquialisms. And this is where we had I don't a even know what that is. It's the shit that Puerto Ricans serve during the right. holidays. It's great, actually. <laughs> Like it's eggnog. like eggnog, yeah. got some rum in it. I love it. I had some last week. Tiffany so, had his water. So she goes to me. She Great. says, um, "Maybe, maybe your rappers' friends talk that way, but I don't talk that way." Whoa! And I said, "Excuse me." And she goes, "Okay, maybe that came off wrong." Ooh. And I was like, "All right, whoa, we got a problem here." So, uh, so you pulled out. Well, I mean, I would have kept doing it, frankly, because I wanted the money. But uh, so what they did is she came in and, she, you know, she gave me this big speech. I've given it a lot of consideration. I really like you, but it's not working out. And I was like, look, I just I was miserable. I was talking about this with my wife the other day. I was like going around hoping a car would hit me and just like break my legs. So yeah. I said, like, just quit. Why didn't you just quit? <laughs> no. I should have just quit. Weird, wrong with you? I'm a worker. Just quit. Dog. I should have. And I would. But I, I just had a baby. That's why you still got limes, dude. Why? Because I just don't quit it. You don't want to quit it. <laughs> right. I should just. Yo, just quit fire, this lime fire, shit, fire. bro. Just be gone. Thoughts? So anyway, long no story. Way. Long story short, they get rid of me. <laughs> then they go and they do the same thing. What? <laughs> but I'm showing you the Trump business model. So yeah. they get rid of me. Yeah. Then they go to somebody else. I think it was like a woman in California, and they said, "Listen, we got this book. It's three quarters of the way done. It's a forty thousand dollar job because it's really almost done." But do it for twenty. Do it for twenty. Hot. So Hot and you'll fire. get the same speech. So they get a hundred thousand dollar job for maybe they paid me ten or fifteen. I just gave I was like, I don't care about the money. I handed over all the notes. I was like, I just want out of this shit. Mm. And so they get a they get a hundred thousand dollar job for I'm gonna be honest with you, Chris. I bought you in here because I thought you were gonna tell us a story about Donald Trump's thin eagle. You just told us how you got the tariff done. Yeah, yo, dude, like, yo, 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 good negotiator, great guy. Great negotiator. Yo, I've never listen, listen. Part of the deal, dog. I've never said that I don't think Trump is smart. I've, you've never heard me say he's an yeah. idiot. You've never. I think the guy is. He's dumb at politics. That's what people like. like well, I think I think he has zero moral center, and I think he has zero self awareness. I mean, the other thing was. 
they pulled me out for doing the shrug. And maybe you shouldn't do that shrug in my position. But I interviewed one of Ivanka's friends. Same thing. She got kicked off his private jet because they were watching TV and a joke came on about his hair. And, and she, she laughed, laughed. And they pulled... Now, see, that's the thing. Now, that show. They pulled her off the fucking legal. jet. And they're yeah, like, yeah, you yeah. don't so they, do that. they landed the plane and then kicked her off? I don't know exactly how it happened, but she was like... Whatever you do, she was trying to hit me. She was like, "Whatever you do, don't make a joke about this guy." You know, Trump would hate you, Andrew. Yeah, huh? You, Trump would hate you. Yeah, you and Trump could never be friends. Why would we want to be friends? I'm just saying, if y'all was, because you like the joke, like he would hate you. Oh yeah, he could dish it out. He can make jokes. He can make oh, Yo, her teeth are gonna fall out. He loves most that stuff. people. This is what I've learned just from being in comedy right. in general. Most people who like dish it out cannot take it. Comedy, right. that's the fucking media. Life, industry. all that. Yes. And it's so disappointing, bro, <laughs> yes. because because when you meet these people that, that you know, you're like, oh man, they're good ball busters, they're fun, and then you want to go back and forth with them right. and they get super sensitive. You're like, they, they, oh, it's a facade. But what they, they don't know, they, they're not confrontational. So it's like when you have that conversation with them, and it's not a conversation in a bad way. It's yeah. that when they throw something out, like, all right, fuck them. Oh, we got this. Right. Let's go. And you realize this motherfucker's sensitive. And I, then they by break the way, down. I can't work with people like that. Bro. I hate it. I, I It's it, one of it, the easiest it, things working with you. Is I can say whatever. Bro. I mean, I'm I think the shit is funny. I laugh when Duval's fucking with me. Bro. I laugh when Donnell Bro, Donnell, fucking Donnell, with me. Yeah, I, I think yeah, Donnell yeah, yeah, yeah. Donnell's text yeah. wild. <laughs> wild. <laughs> you think his Instagram is wild. What is it? Bro. <laughs> I'm gonna show you something Donnell what? said. You can't repeat it though. I'm gonna just show you this shit had me rolling this week because he's fucking with me about the whole 6 9 shit. Right. And I'm trying to, I'm, I'm explaining to him sarcasm and hyperbole. All right, look, all right. So look, so he sends me this picture. No, I got to show you. Okay. Right. Yeah, so, yeah. okay. He goes, a bed is, a, he sends me this picture. So it's me on all fours and Speedos with 6 9 coming out of jail. And he says, a bed is a bet, son. I said, it's called sarcasm, son. The man ran around telling people to suck his dick all the time. You a comedian, you should understand the joke. He said, nope, 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 nope. I said, Chappelle, Pryor, and Biggie have all joked like that. You're not a comedian, son. You're one of the most powerful nigga voices in our culture, son. You help <laughs> niggas with mental illness. Comedian's not helping with mental illness issues, son. Oprah Winfrey loves you, and so does CNN. You're not a comedian, son. I said, Biggie wasn't a comedian either. Grow up. Stop being homophobic. I'm just fucking with him right here, right? So he goes, people don't take me seriously. We can't take you funny, son. I said, Biggie said you look so good, I suck on your daddy's dick. Hello? He's still there. Explain Biggie. So he talks about his gay brother. My brother Chucky said, a bet is a bet, and he wants the winner. <laughs> so, he goes, <laughs> so, so he goes, he goes, I won't interrupt you in 6 9 Stop being hoodophobic. Hoodophobic. So, is so great. I said, explain Biggie. He said, nope, probably was a ghost rider, son. I said, real niggas don't give a fuck about shit like that. Chappelle, Pryor, Biggie. Real niggas. He said, the streets didn't know you fucked with real niggas, son. They thought Wax is the only one. You can't dodge this one with your big words, son. Um, Don Lemon wants the truth. And then he said, <laughs> he said, plus, he goes, plus you have too much history with 6 9 We saw how serious you were about beat him beating that case. Trey Way dropped one of Clues bombs. So I come back with the Biggie shit. I say, I miss the old New York when y'all didn't care about Biggie saying he wouldn't fuck RuPaul over escape. Don't repeat this. Look what he put. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, son. You can't do that to the audience. <laughs> okay, so then I, I will tell the audience this one. So listen. <laughs> so, so then I put I put the laughing emoji, and then he put mad niggas would have fucked RuPaul over escape. That's fact, son. I said, oh shit, let me screenshot this. He goes sarcasm. I'm a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm saying all that to say that's how we joke. Yes. I do not like people who dish it but can't take it. Yes. I I actually, I actually despise those. Yo, and those people low key get exposed, man. All the they fucking get exposed. time. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. What did I tell you this week, Taylor? What? All the fucking time. Who who who? I'm who, not who, saying. Who? I'm not saying. Who can I say? No. Mm -mm. Do I know? I'm not saying male or female. Stop. I'm not saying. Oh, I know. I'm just saying, saying a lot of people can oh, dish I it. Oh, I know. A lot of people can dish it, but they can't oh, take I it, bro. I know. Can we get a soundboard? And you know what I hate about those type of people? Chris people? You can say the look, you can say the Chris small people? you can say the smallest thing. Like not even like a mm, just a no, little No, no, no. Just, just a, a jab. Bap, bap. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fall apart. Oh. Fall oh. apart. Oh. Fall apart. Oh. 
No, I listened to a great podcast with uh, Peter Vesey, the basketball writer, the other yes. day, and he accused Bart. Oh, I forget. I was about to say what happened to Joe. I forget him and Andrew fell out years oh, ago. Okay. Y'all still ain't reconciled? I mean, we talk. It's no big deal. I don't hold nothing. I can't hold grudges. I ain't even heard. I got to. I got even heard from Joe in a minute. Yeah. Used to text every night. Anyway, he, he uh, Vesey Senior called out Barkley as being one of those people who does what? Who will say anything about anybody? Yo, but if you come at Barkley even a little bit, he's like Barkley he's the biggest phony of all the time. The butt of every joke on NBA Tonight. He is literally. They make fun of him nonstop. Yeah, he allows it. Yeah, I think that is the biggest horseshit comment. The uh, maybe if you like call out his criticism. I don't know. Maybe he caught his criticism of his NBA career. It's different. But as far as having a sense of humor about himself and being self-deprecating and like letting Shaq tackle him and beat yeah, him up and like emasculate him. Up. Yeah. He, he Nothing there. Purposely he put talks costumes stupid. on. Yeah. yeah. Like, no, dude, he is the. Yeah, he is, I don't believe that about Barkley. I don't buy that. Maybe Barkley just don't like Peter. Facts. That's and, a, and that's the other and, thing, too. Peter's low key the biggest troll. Really? Yeah. yeah I mean, it was a, a, it was a great interview, troll. but I was like. I could see why people don't like this guy. He's like, the, he, he was the troll back fuck. in the day. Like, remember when Carl Malone lost the fucking? It was uh, after Game Six. Yeah. He had just lost the finals to the Bulls. And to the Bulls, and he's interviewing. And what does he say? He's like, "Is this the lowest point of your career?" <laughs> and it's like, for what? That's a good question. The guy's still sweating. That's a great. Time That's to what ask he said. He question. said, "Look, my job is to go <laughs> in there and ask the tough questions." That's they, a great they, time they, to ask they talk about is that. it a great question to ask if losing their, your first NBA Finals is the low point of your career? By the way, if you ask LeBron, that LeBron will say no, 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 no. But like, LeBron would have a great answer to that question. LeBron was like, "I live real life." No, like, no, 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 no. That that'd be life. He says yeah. it's the low point of your career. Career is sport. Of course, it's the low point of your career. In nah, retrospect, I don't was. think that was called low point in his yeah, career. Hey, if you just get out the pool and someone goes, is this the wettest you've ever been? <laughs> low point of Carl's career. <laughs> low point of Carl's career when they tried to make him play Magic Johnson when Magic Johnson had HIV. That's what he did not want to be out there. <laughs> That's what, what Carl was, was contemplating retirement. His T-cell count low. <laughs> That's what, what Carl was. What, dude? That's, what Carl, That's a fact. That's what Carl, that was the problem. <laughs> Them T-cells were dipping. T-cells were low. When the T cells are low, it's an issue. Facts, facts. We're getting scientific. That's when Carl. That's when Carl. Carl absolutely was not going on that court with Magic Johnson. That's when he was contemplating retirement. Carl said, "What if he bleeds on me?" Now yo, think about how times yo. have changed back then, where he could have say something they? like that. Have they changed? Yes, you know why? Because he could say something like that. Ain't that what you're thinking? And a bu- exactly a bunch of people. Act we're like they're not that. thinking that? They, we didn't know. We were uneducated to HIV. I was a kid. I had no idea what HIV was. Now I'm was. educated. Think the same way. <laughs> no, stop, man. Shut I up, think man. no differently. Shut up, man. I'm dead ass. You're telling me somebody got the full-blown HIV. Yeah. He doesn't. What? But he thought he did. No, but, but he, he doesn't. who knows if someone does right. back or not. But yeah. now you're saying someone full-blown HIV, you guys are playing a pickup game. My man is in the post, elbows out. If he fighting starts, for boards, if, if he starts bleeding, diving if, for fucking balls. If he starts bleeding, I'm calling timeout. If, if I'm calling timeout, son, I'm calling timeout. We're not taking these risks. They do that in risks. the NBA now, by the We're way. We're not taking these risks. They, bro. They, you, know, you know they do that in the NBA now. What? If you start bleeding, right? Yeah. They stop the game, and that's because Good. Of I don't want your blood absolutely. on me, bro. Yeah, what absolutely, is it? Absolutely, absolutely. So you can't be upset for people for feeling like that, Bruh. No, you can't. Why do we even have to, like, argue this? Dude, if I get that shit, I'm dead, potentially. I have every right to protect myself. Nah, nah, you it's can, not prejudice. You can live with the hiv now. You can live, but then you can't fuck nothing. You, you gotta can't, explain you gotta let, fucking... You gotta let people know. Yeah. That's all. Bro, if you, were, if you were playing naked basketball and someone was like, hey, I just wanna let everybody here know I got herpes, you gonna play? Yes. Why would you play naked basketball? Have you you don't have white friends? <laughs> well, first of all, yes. <laughs> yes. I wouldn't be playing no, naked basketball. If you and your homies is playing naked basketball, right? It, 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 it's, it's, or post moves it, only. It, it's mad people living with it's, 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 it's mad people living with HIV. Like, you know, it's it's not it's not the death sentence that it once was. Son. You just gotta you just gotta let people know where, be aware of your status. Like it's actually some cool ways they could like market people okay. with HIV. Okay. Easy. Go. Naughty by nature. You down with HIV? Yeah, you know me. Have a whole hotline. <laughs> run commercials. Run. I'm dead serious. Run commercials. Run ads. So you have a community for people who all have HIV and they can date each other. I'm dead right. serious. Like, like, that could work. Right. I actually think, and I'm not 100% certain of this, but I think there are different strands of it. And I think that they can give each other the different strands, which increases 
the effect of the disease potential. I know nothing about that. Of the virus. No, Am I right about I, that, Chris? I know nothing. Kind of like limes. Kind of like limes, kind yeah. of like cystic fibrosis. Yep. There's different levels of limes? Sure. Bro, there's really? lemon. They got <laughs> limeade. <laughs> a lime with ginger. Son, son, they got a whole Moscow mule, bro. You gotta be careful. <laughs> they got a Moscow mule, bro. But listen, so listen, to put a cap on this Trump shit, where does it go from here? Because mm. we know the Senate's not gonna vote to impeach him. Right. So, 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 Charlemagne, you kind of understand this better than I do. What is the political process exactly going on? The House votes. Yeah. To get him impeached, so he's impeached. So you need a 51% majority in the House? And 67, I think it's either 57 or 67. 67. You need two-thirds majority. Okay, that's what it is. So House needs 51% Mm -hmm. to impeach. Now, that then goes to the Senate. They need two-thirds to get him removed from office. And it's not going to happen. I mean, the Senate the Senate's right. controlled by the Republicans right now. Right. So, so, it's, so it's, it's not going to happen. But we, we've been saying this. Like, there's nobody who has not been saying so this. So the goal of this is just to disrupt and try to, like, tarnish the brand I think for the goal, 2020. I think the goal is checks and balances, man. I mean, yeah. listen, if, if you believe in country over party, uh, yeah. if you believe in, you know, presidents not being, being lawless, yeah. then you should agree with Trump being impeached. And by the way, it might help Trump. It oh, might help Trump. It, that's the thing is, it, I think these types of things just embolden his base, man. Nah, but I think it might help him. Ah, to let him know. Oh, operate better. I fucked up. I've been fucking up. Yo, it's, it's, interesting. Yo, and, and when something when stuff like this happens, it's got to be at least one person. Maybe maybe it's Ivanka. Somebody. It's got to be at least one yeah. person you listen to that said, "Pops, you fucked up, yo." Chris, make the call. I got it. Make the call. I'm Chris. serious. Like, yo, it just may and, help And him. she is the one that he listens to. It's clear that out of yeah. the entire family, she's the one. Definitely would, not the other daughter. He's been hiding her, bro. I would love to know what right. she thinks. She's under a bridge. I right. would love to know what she thinks about this. She's been very, very quiet. I would love to know what she thinks about this whole situation. I think she supports her father 100%. Really? I mean, you can was, support him, but you can still say he's my wrong. Impression. Nah, I think, I think she thinks he's misunderstood. I think she... She struck me as someone who was, I mean, you could say any child is brainwashed about their parent. Dude, but any like, child loves their parent, but also yeah. when you see your parent succeed against all odds. Right. Even if you're not the child, you start to believe what they say. Right. I'm sure early in your career, Charlamagne, you start to experience this with the people around you. They stopped thinking you were crazy and they started thinking, oh shit, maybe he's right. Do you remember, you remember your peers earlier in your career when you started to like- no. Never once when you came I to New York. I haven't to that level yet. Hold on. When you came to New York and then Breakfast Club started to blow up. No. Your peers didn't start going. They still think I'm fucking crazy and gay. <laughs> What's Where's the gay part? I don't know. Maybe it's me. That penis will do that to you, man. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> man, what is happening? <laughs> yeah, Who's know. got the board? <laughs> you got the board? Was that you saying that? That was me saying that. What? I don't even know what I was talking about. Surge? <laughs> no, I wasn't talking about Surge. I was talking about, I might have been talking about, a, I was talking about a woman. Now, I, I, might, you... I might have been talking about the little girl that got faked her kidnapping in New York. I don't know. <laughs> she did it for her boyfriend. I thought she did it because her mom wanted to take her back to Honduras. And she didn't want to leave that little dirty Bronx dick she had in goddamn <laughs> the BX. Why would she have to? Because they moved back to Honduras. They were supposed to be. Mo- the, the word on the curve is yeah. the family was moving back to Honduras. Why? I don't know. They're from Honduras. Wanted to move back to Honduras, and she had a boyfriend in the Bronx. Who's Usually it's the other way, right? Usually mm-hmm. people are like dying to get from Honduras to America. Duval's been in Honduras for two weeks. So he had to go check out what they want to get to so <laughs> I bad. No, Dr. Sebi's from Honduras. People I know from Honduras love Honduras. Right. Yeah, I know my man, Mr. G. I mean... Yes, yeah, so I don't. I mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I think yeah, Honduras yeah. probably like any place else. Everybody that leaves their country <clears throat> loves it. You ever notice that? Like very few people like come from their country and they go, "Nah, fuck that." Well, Doctor Sebi lived there. Like Sebi was living in Honduras. That's where Left Eye got killed, right? Left yeah. Eye, well, not got killed, but that's what yeah, she died yeah, in her yeah. Like people go to Honduras. Like like I said, Duval's there now, but um, she didn't want to move back, and so they said she faked the kidnapping with her boyfriend in order not to move back. So I could have been talking about that situation and saying that penis will do it to you because the penis will make you make bad decisions. You know what I mean? Ah, uh, but isn't her boyfriend super old? That's what I heard. I don't know if that's true or not. He is. Oh yeah, he's committing a crime. Yeah, they gotta yeah, they gotta handle that. Um, but yeah, I never got that from my peers. From I your still peers. think they they still think it's luck. I'm crazy. I don't know. I, but you know what though? I'm sh- I I know history will be kind. Yes. I that 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 I know. Yeah. That I I know to all at, at some point. They Maybe not be like, your peers, but what about 
I think people who have achieved success recognize success and they recognize the, I don't know, the, the qualities that get you there. Yes. I so think people these other are, people, yes. Yes. not that, peers, but people who have already achieved success. They go, ah, he's got it. He's on, he's on to something. Um, and I think, I think regular people, I think people that are just, you know, on yeah, the yeah. outside looking in peers. No. Because peers are competing. They're competing. Yeah. So they so they so they they always want to paint you as crazy or or off. Did you I'm curious if you experience as well. Did you experience love from like an other markets? Like DJs from other markets. Did they show you love before the ones that were like close to you? DJs from other markets like show did West Coast show you love because yeah, yeah. first, like, cause there wasn't this competition. It was like, yo, that new guy's dope. And I don't got to worry about him. Eh, I mean, radio personalities show love from other places. Like, you know, I got plenty of friends in the radio industry. My man had Kendra G. But Yo, I think that head, um, you never, re you don't realize that these people are also in competition with you until they have a, they have a opportunity to take a shot at you. You know what I'm saying? So what do you I've mean? Seen, I, so, so, I, so I've seen things like, say if, uh, you know, say if me and Angela Yee, they say me and Angela Yee beefing or whatever, whatever. Yeah. Then I'll, I'll see other personalities and comments on, on Instagram on pages. Yeez. Not even just ye, but just like yeah. Shade Room or whatever, saying little things like, yeah, he should have stuck up for her or this and that. But right. when they see me, it's a whole nother story. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, publicly, yeah. you'll take an opportunity to take a shot. But you, and I, and I said that before. I said, you know, um, when it comes to situations like that, you got to be very careful because that's when people try to infiltrate. And that's when you really realize how they feel about you and your situation. Because they're really just tired of seeing you fucking win. So if they think that the Titanic could be sinking... They get in there. They want to be invested in that demise. There you fucking go. Let's put some weight on this shit and make this shit sink faster. Interesting. You know what I mean? But so you, it, ain't you even really, it ain't even really about her. No. It's more about sinking the whole boat. That's it. That's uh, it. Because at the end of the day, if you take two guys and a woman... Put them in a studio. Yeah. Or you take this guy and put him in a studio. Yeah. Like whatever it is. Why aren't why isn't your show doing what their show is doing? Right. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's still a competition. Yeah, yeah, regardless, yeah. No, no, regardless, regardless, of, regardless of we're in the same market or not, it's still a competition. Cause like we talked about earlier, the world is fucking flat. So being that the world is flat, mm. YouTube videos go out, social media follows, all of this different so stuff. So why are they doing millions of views and we not? <clears throat> Simple. That's yeah. It. Simple. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. So your peers will never really truly give it up. But that's why I give it up. Yeah. I give it up because I'm not insecure about my position. You know what yeah, I'm saying? I, I like, guess, I, like, yeah. I, like I like I give it up. That's like how I, I've always that's how I've always felt. I've always just tried to support the people I thought were good. And now I have really specific tastes. Like I don't think everybody's good. I'm gonna tell you something though. Yeah. 2020, bro. Yeah. It's just like, you know, when you know the cards that you're playing. Yeah. You know the seeds that have been planted. Yeah. You know what's coming. Sometimes you just got to talk a little shit. Bro. 2020, man, I'm going to have to start talking just a little bit more can shit. I, can I, I just, can we start now? Okay, let's can go. Can we start talking a little shit? I, I, I just, because I, I really just, a lot of shit, I, I just don't think. It's almost on some Roy Jones shit. Like y'all must y'all must have forgot. forgot. <laughs> like, or, 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 or by the way, maybe you just don't know. Maybe you just don't know who's really pushing things in this culture. Yo, you, you know, know what, what I mean? Dude? Who's really connecting these dots? Who's you really need to moving and shaking? Constantly fight for your rep. Like we are living a what have you done for me lately society, man. And like, and there ain't nothing wrong with that because we're out there talking to people, but. You need to constantly show what is going on. I listen, I'll give you a perfect example. I don't like talking around. Don't rest on your laurels, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I don't know who Laurel is. What do you mean? I don't know either. <laughs> That's a weird, like, I really, I really that? just said that with no clue what that means. <laughs> like, rest on your, I know Laurel and Hardy. Uh, yeah. When people say rest on your laurels. I'm like, what does that mean? We don't rest on this person. I think I was using hyperbole. We had a brother, uh, you, you know, you know, I'm, 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 you know the NOI is my people, right? Yes. So, Nation you know, of Islam. Nation of Islam. So My we, people too. We've had Minister Farrakhan, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I, I, I first interviewed him in 2005. Yeah. Um, I've, I've interviewed him for his his documentary that you can buy on thefinalcall.com. I've had him on Breakfast Club twice. 
you know, uh, Brother Wesley Muhammad had him on. Brother Tony Muhammad had him on. It's another very dynamic speaker in the Nation of Islam. His name is Brother Nori Muhammad. Been following Nori for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple weeks ago, um, I get a I get a text from uh, my, my 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 man, Brother Don Muhammad, and he was like, "We we we need equal time." And whenever the brothers in the nation say they need equal time, that means that somebody has said something about them that they would like to rebuttal, right? Um, so uh, on, on Joe Budden's podcast, uh, I guess Joe asked the question, who killed Malcolm X? And um, somebody in the room with very wide hips said something to the extent of, um, you know, he said something to the extent of, he said, he said something to the extent of, uh, you, you know who did it, and basically said it was the NOI. And so <clears throat> the NOI wanted to rebuttal. So I connected Joe with Brother Don. Yeah. Brother Nori was supposed to be on Joe's actual podcast, but I think it ended up being a call in or whatever. Yeah. I have no problem doing things like that. The reason I have no problem doing things like that is because I want people who have something to say to be on every platform possible. And I understand Joe has a platform that a lot of people listen to. So if that mm -hmm. kind of, if that kind of, you know, and I, I, a false narrative is out there. I want to give the brothers in the NOI a chance to clean that up, and I'm glad that. What they say, I I I, I thought that was the case. I didn't. Oh know. no, that's definitely not the case. Who it, killed him? It, it wasn't. The, it wasn't the NOI. It was the FBI. But I mean, it's like it was the craziest thing in the world to think that anybody else would kill Malcolm X in that time where J. Edgar Hoover was taking out every black organization. Right. Like, like the same people who took out Martin Luther King Jr., same people who took out Fred Hampton. The only difference is it goes back to what I was talking about earlier. If you can cause disruption in a team, at a time when a team is having turmoil... Yeah. You but kill, didn't Malcolm you break away two birds from... One stone. Didn't he break away from the NOI? Yeah, but that, wasn't for, that was because he didn't agree with uh, Elijah Muhammad's moral, moral stance when it came to uh, fathering children with other women. Right. So 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 morally, he felt he felt uh, betrayed because this is right. a guy that he believed in. You know, he 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 looked up to. This is a guy that taught him. He also, I think, went to Mecca and felt like he found a, a different version. That of was Islam part of it too. He, he saw taught, white yeah. Muslims and things like that. That was yeah, that was yeah. a, that was a part of it too. But I always say that was a moment where the student should have became. Well, he went to the Mecca. Teacher. He's like. I can fuck white bitches again? No, that's not what happened. <laughs> <laughs> it's lit. Yeah, but, gotta be very, but listen, got to be very careful when talking about certain people. Because when we talk about the rappers pulling up, rappers may not pull up, but them brothers in bow ties will. <laughs> right? Yo, they don't miss Let me tell beat. you something. They are scarier. Bro. Dude, Brother Muzone in The Wire. Do you remember that character? Brother Muzone. He was the guy that they hired. They had, they had a guy come down from New York. Hit me. The fucking hitman. And he was there in the suit and tie. Oh, amazing character. Well, anyway, go on. So, yes. So, long story short, connect Nori with, with, with uh, connect Brother Don and Joe. Yeah. Brother Nori gets on the podcast, whatever. And they spoke. So, of course, I'm, of course I'm going to have Brother Nori on the Breakfast Club. Right. You had Brother Nori on the Breakfast so Club? So now people are like, yo, you just trying to do... My ah. God. Yeah. And that was the first time I ever felt like saying, you stupid motherfuckers. Right. right. Who the fuck you think connected them? Like, what, like, and that's yeah. what I be saying when I'm talking about, like, this isn't new. This yeah. isn't new territory. Like, we've been, at least I've been doing stuff like this and giving brothers but how like many people? How many people would even make that comment? Uh, enough for me to notice. Like what? Like, oh, but a, that's just me, though. I notice all that Yeah, bullshit. like, I feel like you might even be giving oxygen to the it. The moral like, of the cares? story is I don't give a fuck. Y'all motherfuckers gonna learn in 2020 about hooker by goddamn crook. You sound like okay? you're giving a fuck. No. You sound like someone called your hotel no. glitzy. No, I'm, I'm, no, no. What I'm, no. I just like, I just like dealing with the reality of the situation. Let's deal with reality. Let's stop with the falsehoods and let's stop with the false narratives. All right? That's you, my, that's you my whole thing. You want your credit and you deserve your credit. I'm not even gonna call it credit. It's not even about credit. It's just about what's truth and what's not truth. I think. As simple as that. It's really, it's really yeah. about what's, what's truth and what's not true. So if you make a false statement, and by the way, all of us have the the, the right to do that. If somebody makes a false statement about you, I mean, you're allowed to tell yeah. them exactly what the truth is. A hundred percent. That's it. And you have to control your narrative because if you don't, the people will. And some people don't fuck with you. So they're going to control it in a way that you don't like. What do they say? History's written, Ooh, written by the winners. But I will say this, though. Yeah. I think that, uh, I think this week shows you can't escape reality. And you can't argue against reality. 
There you, can, is, you, uh, can, you can say whatever yeah. you want. Yeah, you can you can try to paint whatever narrative you want online. You can say whatever you want about people online. That shit will not stop the truth from being the motherfucking truth. I don't care how many people uh, don't believe it. Right? I don't care how many people believe a lie. It's still a lie. I don't Bro. care how many people don't believe the truth. It's still the truth. Still and at the end of the day, reality will always prevail. I had a big week. I had a big week. Maybe we'll pay some bills and I'll come back and we'll talk about it. Sounds good? All right, cool. Um, guys, if you're looking for a fun way to pass the time while engaging your brain and enjoying breathtaking visuals in a gripping story, your answer is Best Fiends, Okay. Best Fiends is a casual game anyone can play. I've played it. Great for any sort of travel. On the plane, Best Fiends. You're driving. You're in a Uber. Best Fiends. You're in a Lyft. Best Fiends. Okay? It's a fun game. Challenging. It will break up whatever monotonous bullshit you're going through in your life in that moment. Okay? Girlfriend's driving you crazy. Best Fiends. Boyfriend's driving you crazy. Best Fiends. Okay? She giving you the silent treatment? Best fiends. Get your best fiends on, okay? Your girl trying to talk about what type of diamonds she wants when you're not even planning to propose just yet. Best fiends. <laughs> what? What y'all, what, what y'all talking? <laughs> hey, baby, try best fiends? This is fun. <laughs> Listen, they update the game monthly with new levels and events so it never gets old, right? You know who updates um, uh, pictures of that diamond monthly? Uh, it also does not require internet to play. So it's great for traveling. Engage your brain with fun puzzles and collect tons of cute characters. Trust me, you got over 100 million downloads of this game. It's five-star rated mobile puzzle game. So it's a must-play. Download Best Fiends for free at the Apple App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R. Best Fiends. I want to uh, I want to talk about something real quick. A cool. Mm-hmm. This has been a pretty cool week for me. But... um that goes along with that perfectly. Reality will always prevail. And, uh, I basically, I, I just signed a deal for my first network, uh, standup special. Big Dick Schultz. Building. And Young gonna, Hezzy. Hey man. We're Middle age Hezzy. Middle age Hezzy. It's so true. It's so true. <laughs> Middle age Hezzy. Can you say who you signed with? Um, I well, I signed. I can't say the company that w- that w- is releasing it. I can say the production company that I partner w- up with it on it and uh, Comedy Dynamics. But I'll tell the story. I told the longer version of the story on on um, Flagrant Two. You guys can check out if you want to hear the whole thing. But basically, what happened is, long story short, is um, when I was releasing Views from the Sis, my last special. Mm-hmm. Um, I was in L.A. a week before, and uh, I tell this story just because I think it's important to understand your worth, right? And it's like a week before I'm about to release it, um, we get a call from this production company called Comedy Dynamics. And they're like, hey, we want to talk to you. We'd like to potentially release your your special now. Before that, nobody wanted to release it all, right? I sit down, I'm like, I'm about to release it on YouTube. And they go, don't release it, we'll make you an offer. And I go, okay, it's got to be a million dollars, right? Now, nobody else wanted it, but I put the value at a million dollars. Now, they go... I don't, I don't know about that, but, uh, I th- we think you're great, blah, blah, blah. And I said, that's not totally, I released it on YouTube, you know, theaters, tours start to happen. I have a lot of success. Everything's great. You got hot, son. I got hot. Don't, don't be humble with this shit. Oh, you no. got hot, I motherfucker. Got hot. I got hot. All good. right. The YouTube numbers went up. You started selling out arenas all over the motherfucking place. You cool. started putting your shit on Instagram. You got hot. I got hot. I got hot out there. So I go do this. It shit was good. I go do this festival called Just for Laughs. I come back. It's good. We get a call from Netflix. Netflix goes, hey, we want to give Andrew Schultz a, a slot in this show called The Degenerates, where I do 15 minutes with a bunch of other comics, also do 15 minutes. Donnell did, did it, you know, and a few other people are focused on it. I wouldn't do that if I was you. The way I looked at it was this. I go, I go, I put my stuff out for free on Twitter and Instagram and YouTube. Like, I got nothing. Oh, you're right. I got nothing wrong with taking you're right, you're right. 25 grand for, I think they were off in 25 grand for 15 minutes. So we're like, well, I'm interested in it. You know, like, um, the next day we get a call from Comedy Dynamics, that other produ- production company. They say, hey, what's Andrew up to? You know, we heard JFL is really good. What's Andrew up to? My agent, TJ, shouts to TJ, was really smart. He goes, he just got an offer from Netflix. He don't say what it's for. Hey. He goes, we got an offer from Netflix. So they go, don't sign anything. Let us make him an offer. We'll hit, we'll hit you up in a second. We go back to Netflix trying to stall. 
So what we basically ask them for a bunch of things we know that they're not going to give us, right? Can Andrew be the first episode? Can he have his face on the thing? Can he have all this kind of shit like that? We know, you know how the fucking bureaucracy is. They got to go ask a million people. We have a couple of days. Comedy Dynamics comes back with a contract. My agent sits me down. He's so fucking excited. He sits me down. He goes, here it is. Check it out. I look at the contract. The contract is for the next special. It's for a million dollars. For you? For me. Okay. I go, this is fucking unbelievable. It, it, but it's a shame we're going to have to say no. And he, he literally had a heart attack. He was like, what do you mean? Like, we just got it. We, and I was like, well, that's how much the last special was for. Things have changed now. My dick is bigger. The dick grew. The dick grew, baby. The dick grew. Is that all you? This summer dick. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got yeah, summer yeah. dick, yeah. dog. Yeah. <laughs> hey, bro, yeah. hey, hey. Yeah. It's all me, dog. Yeah, it's all you. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, me and the people, you know what I mean? Is that all you? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> right. You need the wax line that damn that look big as hell. <laughs> Come on, tell me more. This shit excites me. Come on. So So I say, I say we gotta say no. He goes, what are you talking? What's the I go, it's the principle. It's like I don't for me it's never about the money. I've been giving my stuff away for free and I'll give it away for free in a fucking heartbeat on YouTube. So you gotta tell him no. And he goes, I I can't believe I'm doing this. So we go back, we say no. We get the call back a couple of days later. And, you know, the price went up. Ooh, so who's it with? Uh, Comedy Dynamics is the production company. Okay. And, and then we... It's, so, a ne- it's, it's, not, it's, a, it's not a network, but it's a... So it's a production it's company a that, that makes it. No, 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 that makes it. And okay. then we sold it to a network that I can't say yet. But gotcha, you guys gotcha, will gotcha. know the new, in, the, in the future. And uh, I gave a hint. Some people might forget it. I can't legally right. say anything right now, but yeah, I gave a little yeah, bit of a hint. Yeah, but yeah, 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 point yeah. is, is that... Like for a while, I gave away all my content for free. And I think what happens a lot of times is like, you're in this business too. It's like, we give away so much for free, but just because you give something away doesn't mean it's valueless. Bro, you know? we used to give crack away. <laughs> yo. I'm being honest. Like that, you give crack away to let the fiends know like, yo, motherfuckers got that good ass dope over there. And when it's time to hit them over the head. That's it. Now hit them over the head. Spin. There I'm it is. Little bump. Here, take a little $10 bump. Boom. Ooh, shit. Yeah. And then you come back with crackheads and they spending three, four hundred dollars. Like that's just the that's the nature of the business. The you game. gotta give out a little free product every now and then. So why you think they'd be in front of the mall giving out them little samples of cakes and shit? Yeah. Like, Dude, that's, that's right. Costco, the, the bagel bites, yes. all that shit. So it was one of those things where it was like this was pretty cool. And then we just had to decide where we're gonna do the special. So I wanted to do it in LA. And I thought it'd be really cool because I see as the Hollywood, you know, matrix is kind of crumbling. This becomes one of the first, if not the first special where it's like completely people driven. It's like the entertainment revolution where Mm -hmm. now you got to have your fan base and your fan base is going to bring you on top. Like the people listening, watching all these podcasts and clips and everything like that, they literally got this deal signed. And they love you in a different way because you've built this cult like following from the ground up. These motherfuckers have been. They built it. Listening to Brilliant Idiots for years. You know what I mean? Watching Guy Code. Like these motherfuckers that probably was fucking with you six, seven years ago and they're like, that's our guy. That's bro. And, and when you win, it's their win. And I never understood this. Duval would always post about, he's like, yo, my win is your win. And I didn't understand it. We released the tickets for the special tapings. We're taping April 11th in LA. And I gave a presale code and the presale code was going to be available Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. This comes out Thursday today. And I just wanted it to be for flagrant two brilliant idiots. And then anybody who follows me on Instagram, YouTube, so they would know about it. We're doing it at the Orpheum Theater in LA. That's the theater Dolomite shot at. Mm-hmm. You know, the one, the final scene where right, he goes, right, right, and I'm right, doing right. it for that reason because I love everything that he represents. He mm-hmm. fucking went to the people. When is it? April 11th. I'll be there. I, I would love you to I'll be put there. put that on the calendar. And the, we released the tickets pre sale and they sold out in 12 hours both shows. Mm. Wow. This is a massive theater, bro. Wow. I could not fucking wow. believe Like, I was like crying on the street like a bitch. But like a bitch outside of this restaurant that's that I was having. Crying. Yeah, never, eh, you're crying like a fucking man. You're crying like a Bro, man. It was, you're crying like a man who put the motherfucking work in and now that work is paying off. Son, and the crazy yeah. thing about reality, right? Yeah. That's why I say you can't argue against reality. Yeah. The crazy thing about reality is you get back what you put the fuck out. You've yeah. been working. Yeah, yeah. You got hot. So now you're getting your fucking just do. That's what yeah. the fuck is going to happen. Yeah. Always. Yeah. It never fails. There's yeah, not right. one person I know that has talent who Puts worked work motherfucking in. hard yeah, and did yeah. not get something back out of it. Yeah. Mm. You got your just do. It just felt amazing, man, to like... It feels surreal. It felt surreal to have that many people want me to win 
and like people want to fly there for that experience and feel so invested in my success. It was overwhelming, dude. Like, cause you, it could be lonely, the business, you know? And like, when you realize yeah. you have that many people rooting for you and like, bro, it just, it, yeah. That's what, this it, is, yeah, this is the time when you got to really put your helmet on and really grab your motherfucking arsenal. Cause when you're so used to fighting, right? Yeah. And now you finally got what you've been fighting for. You like, I'm not used to this feeling. Yo, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Low key, do you know, you know, you're what still it, shooting. No, what it makes me do is like, for me, I cannot wait to deliver the fucking best performances in my you can't life. Wait like, to shoot. I cannot wait. Yeah, it's, you can't it's, wait to fucking it's shoot. It's a different, it's a different fucking feeling, man. I'm like hungry for it because I know it's something that we all built. And it's like, when you put the bricks together, uh, you know, for your own house, yeah. it's different. You're not shooting from a place of defense. You're shooting from a place of offense. This is what we're doing. We dictated this now shit. You got, now you got to defend what you built. Yes. That's it. And it's like, Ah man, I'm just so excited. And and just to let you guys know, if you uh, we're gonna try to add another show, maybe that Sunday. And um, I'm talking to production about, it, or maybe try to find more seats or whatever like that in it. But uh, so so if any of you guys are just hearing about this now, we could make that happen. But just keep keep you know tabs on Instagram, Twitter, whatever like that. I'll probably post about it. But it was I'm proud it, of you, it, man. thank you, man. I'm I thank proud you for everything, bro. I really appreciate you and just like giving me access to so many of your fans and like I don't got nothing to do with this. No, you do, man. You played a, a, a huge role in all of this. And it's like, I am forever grateful. And, and and it's one of those things that like I've tried to pass down as well. It's like, I recognize, and I see you do this a lot. You're like, if you see someone with talent, you'll give them an opportunity. And they got to run with the opportunity yeah, first. Absolutely. But you will give them an opportunity. And it's like, that's some, you know, people always say, well, you know, Schultz, you know, Schultz got Charlemagne, this, that. And I'm like, yes, but you will have a Charlemagne. Somebody will, if you're good, someone will recognize Absolutely. you and they'll 100%. give you a fucking alley oop and you got to go with it. You got to run with it. And it's like, I feel, I hope that, I, f I hope you feel like I ran with it and I, and That's I, obvious. I did and to and the I, best. And, and I always yeah. tell you the best thing you have done is pay it forward to other people. Yeah. It's really important. Just to me don't do stop doing the podcast because this shit about to be worth so much fucking Son, money. I, I, this to me, bro, I that's the, <laughs> that's the announcement too. So, so there's announcement too, right? Okay. For we've been working for a while, I've been working for months on this, but I just built out this new content, you know, factory in in Brooklyn, and it's got, you know, multiple podcast studios, like a little live performance space, like it's, I mean, it's got the green screen, it's got everything that we need to keep like churning out content. Obviously, I know it's far away to do idiots there. Mm -hmm. We should have our own space for idiots, but it's one of those things where it's like getting an opportunity like this with the special allows me to reinvest in these studios and like. Be Absolutely. able to put out all this shit, and it's just, um, it's just, it's just dope to be on the forefront of creation, and like, especially in entertainment, and like shifting entertainment. You know what I mean? It's just like everything we're doing is disrupting. It's rebellion, and like every 100%. rebellion or like revolution, it's the same thing. It's the people. The people decide they're fed up with the regular shit they're being fed. Yes, indeed. And they rock with people who are giving them the shit they want, and it's just so cool to be. I am so excited. Yeah. I am so excited for 2020 to 2025. Yeah. 2020 to 2025, y'all motherfuckers is going to see some shit that y'all have never, ever seen before. Yeah. And you're going to see it by all the motherfuckers that you never thought you would see it from. What do you mean? What do you mean? Us, nigga. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay? The but Duvals it, of the world, the Andrew Schultz. But like, aren't we winning, bro? Isn't we've it crazy? been winning. We've been, but it's we've been, like, we've been winning for a long fucking time. That's yo, why when I see Blueface talking to Duval, I'm like, you don't, don't even Blueface, talk. Blueface, sit down no, somewhere, don't even bro. Talk. You don't even talk. Like, knock it off. You don't like, even Duval talk. been winning yeah. out here for 20 plus years. Yeah, yeah. Before he was putting out hit records and all of that stop shit it, like that. Duval it, been texting me all morning about... About what? Honduras? No, he actually asked me some... I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Oh, no, he asked me about Trump and then he said... Hey, they really bringing good good times back. <laughs> Whatever. But I don't know what the context is. But my, my the moral of the story is, is when I see those guys like Blueface, I'm like, Blueface, yo, relax, kid. Come on, bro. Like, knock it off. You know what I mean? Like, you've been in the game a, a year or so. Duval been in this game 20-something years making money. People don't understand You that. don't get yeah. it. Like, you having a nice little moment, that's cute. All right, Duval been around for twenty plus years. He didn't even understand. He didn't realize that he was criticizing himself. Like in the blue, blue phase, at one point goes, "Yeah, Duval had a nice little viral moment. Everybody has those." It's like, who's talking? 
<laughs> who is saying that? Exactly. You are that. Exactly. And you're experiencing the slow decline of your viral moment. Like, Duval didn't go platinum. Yeah, he went gold. Son. You know what I'm saying? He went gold. And that's a hard-earned gold. How many comedians go gold with an album? Yeah, with a, he, had a with number a one, he had a number one song in the fucking country on Stop. the on the hip-hop and R&B charts. Like, Stop it. And he's like, comedians shouldn't... That was another thing Blueface said. He said, comedians shouldn't uh, do music. Jamie Foxx, Eddie Murphy. And he was like... Uh, Stick to your podcast. You know, it's a lot of rappers that are podcasters now. You know what, what I mean? Wow. And he was like, he, he, he was like, radio, radio person. That, oh, you got the clip? Oh, Blueface? Oh. Listen, if you're a comedian and you try to jump in the rap lane, it's not going to work out the way you think it's going to work out. Just because you got 4 million followers, 5 million followers, then people follow you because you're a comedian. So once you try to rap, they're not going to take you serious. That's second. not true. Can I, give a, can I give an interesting yeah. example? You know who referred to herself as a comedian for years before she became the biggest female rapper in history? Who? Cardi B. If you look at Cardi's earlier yeah, posts, yeah, she used to do yeah, she used to do sketches and then sketches. And she yeah, called yeah. herself a comedian. Yeah. She now it wasn't stand up specifically, but she didn't enter the game as like a rapper rapper. Yeah. By the way, DC Young Fly, he's going to blow up in the music. DC Young oh, Fly is, it, is it happening? Ass, yes. DC DC Young Fly reminds me of like what Jamie Foxx does yeah. like he's that he's got he's got that level talented. of talent. He's DC talented. can sing his ass off. Like it's he's only talented. a matter of time before DC gets a record, he's and that talented. following that he has with comedy yeah. is gonna blow the fuck up. So I don't know what the fuck Blueface is talking about. Then I saw him. Even then, comedians comedians can do damn near everything. Comedians turn into radio personalities. Yeah. Comedians turn into podcasters. Comedians can be actors. Like comedians have such they have longevity that. Rappers like Blueface usually don't have. And I'm not a diss to Blueface. It's just the truth. We've mm-hmm. seen a million of those come and go. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But Bruce Bruce still out here getting his goddamn still. money. Still. All right? Duvall been out here getting money for 20 plus. Yeah, and then I saw him putting up the celebrity net worths, and I'm worth 4 million, and Duvall's worth 1.5. Like, <laughs> this celebrity net worth, what the fuck is that? Right. Yeah. It's I a, mean, that's a, it's not even true, the celebrity net worth. Man, they said really. I was worth crazy shit before I was worth anything. What did they say you was worth? They were saying I was worth $3 million like four years ago. I was broke. Wow. Yeah. They say I'm worth 10. How, you, how, how accurate are we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't spend a mil on her? Yeah. <laughs> More of an indictment of her than it is, than it is, than it is my bank account. <laughs> <laughs> what was the feedback to the Meek thing? I know we got to get out of here, but what was the... People from the, with the Meek interview, From the Meek interview. I mean, I, from, I mean, from what I see, I mean, I just like having those... Um, I just like having those conversations. I loved it. You know what I mean? I just like sitting down and talking I to those brothers it. who... Especially somebody like Meek who I've, who I've watched from the beginning. Like, I was doing radio in Philly when Meek was on house arrest before he had a yeah. deal with Rick Ross or anybody. So it's just like, you know, to see people like that grow and evolve and just... Say even, that one, the one part. Part. Remember the part where they tried to shut him up? And then he was like, nah, people need to know about this. Like, oh, yeah, he was just talking about being on, he said he was taking 10 Percocets a day. 10 Percocets. But the reason somebody like me has to tell his story yeah. is because Juice World's not here to tell his. Right. Uh, Mac Miller's not here to tell his. Right. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. God bless those brothers. God bless the dead. But yo, man, it's people out there that learned yeah. from other people's mistakes and learn from their own mistakes and yeah. realize like I'm a walking dead man if I don't yeah, yeah. stop this shit like he said you can't be a fucking billionaire you can't be a billionaire you know what I'm saying you're gonna That's be a billionaire well I, I just said that like you can be a billionaire <laughs> or a motherfucking billionaire <laughs> or a millionaire you can't be a billionaire there's yeah. a lot of motherfucking billionaires out here they wanna take more pills than they do make money and Meek made a conscious decision to say I'm gonna get this motherfucking bread and yeah. and you can't you can't do both we've been telling y'all that shit for years you can't do both bro that pill shit is affecting it's not just rappers, bro. And it's not just like these like poor like Oxy Kai and whites. Like it's rich folks that shit is fucking up with too. I was down in Salt Lake City. Mm-hmm. And you know how Mormons can't have coffee. They can't have alcohol. They can't have any of these things. But there's nothing on oh, prescription drugs. Really? So you got a lot of fucking devout Mormon pill heads, dude. It's I, a, like a big problem. I feel sorry for all those kids. Like when I see like, you know, Trippy Red... I don't know Trippy Red, but salute to Trippy Red. When I see him say things like, 
We're we not gonna, doing no more. Do it. Yeah. I respect that decision. Yeah. But I don't think he understands the tough role that he's about to have. You just nah. don't quit that shit cold turkey. Yeah. Like, you got to go to rehab. You got to go get treatment. Like, you're going to have withdrawals. Like, that shit yeah. is really going to affect you in a real way. So I really do hope that those brothers get the, uh, the, the help that they need, but it's not going to be easy. I don't know. Why they fucking with pills, though? What they trying to... I be wondering what they trying to escape. Like, and then, see, that's why I said you got to get to the root of shit. That's why I'm so big on dealing with mental health and mental health issues because a lot of these kids have anxiety already. They have depression already. And so when they get on this fuck, when they start self-medicating and they yeah. get that escape they've been looking for, yeah. they don't get off them shit. I think that, I think when it comes to like people who have success and why they want it is because there's a lot of like pressure with success, not to only succeed, but to like, to not, not only to succeed and Bless keep it up, but to like, to exist as that famous person in every interaction you have. Bro, you got to listen to Andre 3000 on Rick Rubin. Show. I got I got to check that. that. Yeah. You got Does he talk about this? Yes, man. Because I've noticed yes. that with, with and weed or like alcohol, what they do is they create this little buffer between you and the world and the people you're interacting with. And you, and you don't have to like make every moment special for every person you talk to. You can kind of just exist in your world with it. And I think that famous people crave that because on some level, it can be exhausting trying to live up to the standard that all these other people have for you. I'll tell you what my therapist told me. You just got to feel your feels, right? Yeah. And whatever you're feeling in that moment, lean into it. Interesting. Like, I don't have to be everything to everybody. Yeah. If I but don't feel like fucking talking, I'm not talking. Initially, when you got famous, didn't you feel a pressure? Before fame, when you was in school. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but was it not you heightened? You got life of the party. Right. But was it not heightened when you become this celeb? Like, even remember when Geico really popped off? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. there was an expectation. Yeah, we. I mean, I think it's, it's, it's impossible to not become a caricature of yourself at some point. I think the first go around with fame... You become this Absolutely. character. Well, not, I don't think the first girl. I think the first, the first uh, hit of it. The first hit of it is like, yeah. oh shit, they fuck with me. I, and well, I, why are they fucking with me? I, they fuck I, with I, me for I, X, Y, and Z reasons. I need to do that. So I need to do this yeah. more. So yep. then that next level is more caricature. Then you realize like, this shit is exhausting. I'm trying to keep I'm this shit. I'm faking it. Up. <laughs> yes. I'm faking me. Yes, it's yes, like when you hear Jerry yes, Seinfeld do yes. his own voice, and you're like, yes. you don't talk like that. <laughs> What's the deal with salad? It's like. My man, you're 70 years old. Talk regular. That's the, that's but isn't it harder for you, though? What's I'm that? saying as a comedian, like, you don't have to be funny. You have to be interesting. Right. In every situation, you actually got to be. No, Chris, hold on. Before this is, you, before this you is pivot, good. Yeah. This is good. Pivot, this is good. He's, he's Go. absolutely right. This is good. I don't have to be funny, but motherfuckers always want to talk to me because I'm always talking. They always want to have oh, conversations. Right. They, they always want to debate. They want to hot take. That's what I mean. You got, you got to just say something. And then he's trying to ask you the dumbest shit. What do you think of Takashi Six <laughs> like, Bro, I'm at fucking. You gotta look at him be like, I'll I'm tell at you how he tastes. Steakhouse with my family. Dang. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, I don't give a fuck. Your daughters are right there. Like, like, I don't give a shit. There is there is something that's interesting though, because you're saying that when you're a comic, there is one expectation for the interaction, and that is laughter. Right. Right. And. With the guy code shit when it first came around, I wasn't prepared for it. So I felt like I had to be funny in every moment that I had with these people. Right. And then that fame disappeared. And I got this. It was the best thing that could have happened because I got an experience with it. I saw it go away. And then I saw how much I valued just not having an expectation in interaction. Yes. And now right. when it came back up through the YouTube videos and obviously success of the podcast and everything... Um, I don't feel the pressure to satisfy everything because I'm not proving to myself that I'm worth it anymore. Mm. Back with God Code, it was I. I probably didn't feel like I deserved that, the that, fame. That's imposter syndrome. Yes, I probably had imposter. My, my therapist talked. So about now that. it's like if you know me from stand up clips, most people that see me on the street, they right. know this podcast stand up clips. You know I'm funny. You watch the clip. Right. I don't got to prove to you I'm funny. Right. Hey, nice to meet you. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, 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 Whereas yeah. with God Code, it was like we were on TV for thirty seconds a day. Yeah, yeah. You don't yeah. know if it was funny. Right. You don't know if it wasn't. And so that it, it that was a real thing for me. It was like just getting comfortable in what I am and who I am. And there's nothing that does that better than having a fan base that fucks with you yeah. instead of a network that fucks with you. Right. Because the fan base, the network can just pull the rug out whenever they want. Right. The fan base is like, nah, we got you. Where are we going? Right. We going HBO? We going Netflix? Right. We going Hulu? Where are we going? Right. You know? And I, I want to give both of you guys props for this because... 
I've noticed both of you guys in terms of your actual one-on-one interactions and instead of just a movement like on the street, you guys always have time for people. And yeah. I know some celebrities who don't. Right. You know what I mean? It's, like, I've seen you guys around enough people. I've never seen either one of you guys, like... Never. Nah, I, it, would, never, I would never front Some people do. Like a oh, lot yeah. of people do. But a lot, a of, lot but, of people but, do. But, but listen, shit might change next year. <laughs> 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 I mean, get it in now. Yeah, if you see Charlotte, saying, get it in now. No, I mean, everybody's <laughs> growing in their respective fields. Right. You know what I mean? Shit is a little... Shit is, I'm, listen, it's a little different out Shit's here. getting a little different. You know what I mean? I just, I, I just know things are getting a little different. I've been in spaces where I have... I have seen people have to whisk me through. Right. Really? And I can't I can't stop and talk to everybody. Yes. But I gotta get to the stage. Uh right. I gotta get out here for this flight. Cause if I do stop, you it's over. It's gonna be a, a while. So yeah, I understand, like yeah. I understand why some people do that. Some people are just assholes. Right. Some people really right. got some place to motherfucking go. Yeah. Next year, I got a lot of places to go. 2021, I got a lot of places to go. 2022, 2023. It's about to, some shit is really about to change around this motherfucker. I'm excited. In a real way, bro. Yeah. Like a real fucking way. You know the one thing that won't change? What? Chris is going to have limes. He's definitely going to have limes. And I'm still not going to be able to pronounce it. That's just the way the game goes. All right, better help. Whatever struggles you are facing from depression and anxiety to trauma and grief, BetterHelp can connect you with a professional counselor in a safe and private online environment. It's so convenient. You can schedule secure video or phone sessions as well as chat and text with your therapist. And anything you share is completely confidential. Best of all, it's a truly affordable option. Our listeners even get 10% off your first month old idiots. So why not get started? Simply go to BetterHelp.com slash idiots and fill out a questionnaire to get matched with a counselor you'll love today. As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. If you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening.